if you have medium length hair that's thin and you want it to look thick, I'm about to share a five step process that will work. And before we even get into it, I am not gonna be talking about hair extensions or thickening serums, which do work and do warrant their own video. If you wanna see a video about those, why don't you go ahead and comment below. But I'm gonna be sharing a process that I've learned over almost 30 years of being a professional stylist. Stuff that kind of people don't tell you about. Okay, before we get into it, if you are new to the channel, first of all, welcome. My name is Justin Hickox, and I've been a professional hairstylist since 1995 and a salon owner since 2000. And on my channel, I like to share tips to make your life a little bit easier and to help you look more youthful. And ideally, maybe even help you gain a little bit more confidence along the way. Now, when we dive into this, there are basically three kind of sections, if you will, to the process of making any hair look thicker. And that is dealing with the ends, dealing with the mid shaft, and dealing with the roots. And so as we break through this process, you're gonna see how we kind of address each of those. And this is overall together what creates a much thicker and more dense look. So step number one, cut all your length off. <laughs> okay, no, I'm kidding. It's not cutting all your length off, but it is cutting length off. And before you rake me over the coals on this one, I understand that many of you are gonna be one, looking at the title of the video saying, what are you talking about, dude? You just said medium length hair, why would I cut all my hair off? I'm not saying cut all your hair off, but what I am saying is that thin hair in general can have a tendency to grow to a certain extent, and then it kind of doesn't get longer. And what I mean by that is it might get longer, but it looks very thin at the ends, and it doesn't really hold any sort of density which allows you to create any sort of internal shape or internal dense looking volume. The next steps, step two through five in this process, are not going to give you any benefit if the bottom doesn't have some density to it. It doesn't matter how much volume you create or how dense the roots look, if the ends look kind of scraggly, it still ends up looking like you're kind of trying to build a house without any sort of foundation. So taking the length up to whatever length it needs to go to so that it can look the thickest it can look is going to be the best foundation that you can have to making your overall look feel and appear more dense. Now, if you are concerned about taking your length up, then there's nothing wrong with that. And I would say that at the end of the day, in any situation like this, I do always tell people, look, you gotta do what makes you feel best. So if taking the length off doesn't make you feel good and it makes you insecure, then don't do it. Don't listen to me, ignore me and do whatever makes you feel the most secure. So you're gonna have to ask yourself the question, what matters most? Is it more important that my hair looks as thick and dense as possible, or is it more important that my hair looks thick and dense to some extent, but that more important that I even have the length, regardless of if it looks a little bit thinner? And the way you answer that is going to dictate how you decide to move forward. Okay, step number two is layer your hair. <laughs> I feel like I am just asking for it in this video. <laughs> okay, I am 100% aware that there are gonna be a lot of you that say, what are you talking about, you idiot? My hair is thin, I can't layer it or I won't have any. You're not wrong, there is a certain kind of level of that, if you will, but follow me here if you will, just kind of work with me. I don't want you to layer all of your hair. I want you to layer very specific parts of your hair. And what that means is we wanna layer mainly the top and not the sides. So there are two reasons that layering makes your hair look thinner. One of them is because it does remove hair from the bottom, right? Anytime your hair is one length and then you layer it anywhere, some of that hair that did reach to the bottom length no longer reaches to the bottom and therefore it feels a little bit thinner at the bottom. But the larger concern stems from over layering in certain areas. If you take your head and you basically section it off from your recession line to the occipital bone, everything below that basically needs to be one length. Now I've made a multitude of different videos where we kind of show you what I'm talking about here, talk a little bit more about that, and I'll link a couple in the description so you can check them out. But if you leave all of that essentially one length, then that's going to be the densest at the bottom that your hair can be and still have layers because what you're doing at that point is just layering the very top. This is gonna lighten your hair up so that you have the ability to get more volume. Now, inherently, because there is less hair at the bottom, like I said before, it will be thinner than it was previously but this is giving a little bit to get a little bit. If we can create more volume at the top, then we're gonna create the illusion of more density. And if that can outweigh your concern of feeling like the bottom is thinner than it was, then that is a really good step into making everything look more dense. Now, why does this matter? Because when your hair is one length, and especially if it's heavy, your hair basically kind of sits like this, boom on each other and you can see me right here. That was kind of creepy. <laughs> you can see me through that. 
but once we layer it, we get more movement and texture in it. It gives us the ability to create more movement and texture. And that means that those hairs go like this. And when they do that, you can see that it's much harder to see me. It looks much thicker or denser. If we can get movement and texture up there, we can create the illusion of more density. If it's all one length, it's going to lay a little flatter and it's going to split and you're gonna see right through it and it's going to create the illusion that it's even thinner than it may be. Okay, so now we started addressing the mid shaft. Let's move a little bit deeper into addressing more of that mid shaft before we move on to addressing the roots. But I'll tell you right now, the fifth step is a mind blower and you are going to love it. Oh, if you've never heard about it, I'll tell you right now, you are in for a treat. But step number three is simple, kind of, and that is using product, okay? <laughs> I know that sounds simple, but many times people don't wanna use product because of the way it makes their hair feel. But here's what we must understand. As I mentioned before in step number two, we need your hair to have some sort of movement and texture because again, that movement and texture is going to do this for us and create the illusion of more density. Naturally clean, soft hair is how everybody wants their hair to feel doesn't have the ability to get volume and texture, especially if your hair is on the thinner side. It's going to be, more often than not, a little bit limper. It needs a little bit of a foundation again to create the basis for bend that creates volume. This is hugely important. Right now, I've gotta be honest before you ask, I don't have a specific volumizing product that I love. I used to have one, it's gone, it got discontinued. And really, I don't wanna just tell you about any products out there randomly, because it's very important to me what I talk about and what I recommend to you. And they need to meet a high standard, and I just haven't honestly found anything that does meet that standard. But if you do have a volumizing product that you absolutely love, go ahead and share it in the comments below. There are so many out there that honestly, I don't know all of them. With all of that said, sidestep, I have been working on a product. I'm about to show you how to take your hair from this to this. Do me a favor and feel your hair. Have you felt it yet? I haven't. No, this is the first time. How does it feel? It feels soft. Does it feel soft? It feels smooth and soft, yeah. Does it feel greasy? And you can be honest. No, 100% honest, not greasy at all. It isn't about volume, but I'll tell you this, if you've ever struggled with frizzy hair, or if you need a little bit more moisture protection, or if you want a little bit of heat protection, or if you want more shine, but you don't want it to lay flat and greasy, uh, I definitely have been working in collaboration with the company over the past handful of months, and we definitely have created something that I will be making a video of and releasing in just a couple of weeks. And you are gonna love it. Just gonna let you know ahead of time. So sneak peek, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm actually filming those videos tomorrow. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. You're gonna flip out. This stuff, it kinda does not suck. <laughs> but anyway, I'm digressing. Keep an eye out for that next couple of weeks. Watch for that video. But you do need some sort of foundational product for volume. So. Ignore the way it feels. I'm sorry, it just has to be one of those things. This is all together a process. Each of these things individually, these steps, don't function nearly as well as they do collectively. So number four is you need to color your hair. <laughs> I'm not telling you to color your hair completely. Again, follow me. I, I feel like I'm setting myself up with the way I'm, I apologize. I'm doing a bad job, so <laughs> work. Specifically what I'm saying is if you currently have color in your hair. Let's just say, for instance, you color it all brown, okay? Now, first of all, we have to understand that colors are on a spectrum. So let's say there's the lightest to the darkest. Number one, level one would be black. Level 10 would be very, very light blonde, almost white. Now let's imagine that you're at a level five and you're coloring your hair every month, a level five. So your whole head is brown. What I'm saying is at the very root, probably about the first inch and a half of hair, dye that a level four. So you're actually dyeing it just a little bit darker than what you are dyeing everything else. Now this way, you're not gonna feel all over like you're darker at all. But what it will do is add that little bit of shadowing around your scalp. And this is where we're starting to bring in the idea of making the scalp or the roots look denser. That bit of shadowing is going to go an immense amount of distance in making your hair look thicker. Now, what if you don't do color right now? Maybe your hair is completely gray, or maybe it's just blonde or whatever color, and you just, I'm not doing color. What you can do is add low lights. Now I know that there's kind of this misconception with the idea of doing color and highlights and all of this kind of maintenance thing. And here's the deal, if you're doing low lights and you're doing them close to the color that you naturally are, so let's say again that your natural color is brown and you just do it like a level, instead of being a level five, you're just doing low lights of a level four, it's not even gonna really show up as your hair is being highlighted or low lighted. It's just gonna show up as a little bit of extra dimension. And that little bit of extra dimension will make your hair look thicker. The grow out is so insignificant and because it's just low lighted, 
You don't see it, it's just kind of gone, and then you can choose to do it again or not do it again. Now, I also do understand that there is an economic impact on this, right? It does cost money to go get your hair low-lighted or highlighted, so that makes sense, don't get me wrong. And if you can't do it, that's totally fine too, but if you can, it is a really, really good tool to have in your toolbox. Now, what if your hair is gray or even light blonde? Now, I've done a video, I'll link it right here, where I talk about exactly the perfect bob and we actually do low lights on my model who has gray hair. And I think you'll be able to see when you watch that video that it isn't dramatic at all, it's just enough. And this kind of piggybacks to my final fifth step. Okay, step number five is fiber. <laughs> no, I am not talking about your diet. I am talking about hair fibers. Now, if you are unfamiliar with hair fibers, your life is about to be changed. Now, I did an entire video where I actually showed myself using them. I'll actually show you that right now. It is absolutely incredible what these do. You have to kind of think of them as kind of a dry shampoo. Okay, so you apply them in the same manner. They're a powder. I prefer topics. I've been using them for a long time, off and on, and I have found really good results with them. So I'll go ahead and link them in the description for you as well so you can find exactly what I'm talking about. They come in all of the different colors and you can mix and match as you like. I do recommend that if you do decide to go with fibers that you get this little top right here that helps you pump them on. It's a much easier way to apply the fibers. But what they basically do is they adhere to your scalp and your roots of your hair and they make you not look like you can see your scalp. And here's the best part. They don't just fall off. They don't rub off on your fingertips throughout the day. They don't drip down your forehead or anything crazy, but they fully rinse out. So you apply them, you wear them throughout the day. It's just like all of a sudden you've got dense roots. And then the next day when you shampoo or whenever you do shampoo, they come right out. It's a non-issue. They absolutely are a game changer. And to me, 100%, if you feel like you've got a thinning scalp and you can see your scalp, absolutely, you can use these. So. This is the overall process. Now, if you follow all of those things in that order and do them all together, collectively they make a wild amount of difference because again, you are addressing the ends, the mid shaft and the roots. And keep in mind that I mentioned this is for medium length hair. With that said, these also work for other lengths of hair. However, when we get shorter, there's a few other things that we could add on that make a little bit of a difference. So it's a little bit more nuanced. If you wanna see a video about shorter hair and how to make it look more dense, then let me know in the comments below and maybe we'll make one of those videos as well. All right, everybody, that is my five step process to making medium length hair that's thin look a thousand times thicker. I'd love to hear your feedback. So comment below, let me know what you think. If you wanna see any of those videos that I talked about, uh, why don't you go ahead and comment and let me know about those. But otherwise, thanks for hanging out. I appreciate you. Uh, there is a button. It's right there, it says subscribe, click that. It's absolutely free, but it does help the channel a lot. So if you wanna support me in any way, that's a really good way of doing it. Also, there's a little bell icon. I know this is so YouTube-y, <laughs> but click that. It'll let you know when this guy comes out with more of his mouth doing this. I know, two, I talk a lot. This was one of those videos where I feel like I talked a lot and there's not gonna be a, you probably are like, I'm gonna get the comments. The comments are gonna be below. He talks way too much. I do, I do. So before you comment, I talk way too much. But I also explain things pretty well. Yeah. So, <laughs> bye. That was like the most mature I have been in so long. <laughs>